Good morning. Good Saturday morning. Oh, 11.45 in the morning. Been out early this morning with Tommy. Went out for breakfast in a different place this morning. And it was, it was okay when we started out. Light rain and a downpour on the way back. What a rotten Saturday. Um, right now it's uh, not raining. But that don't mean it won't downpour when I leave the shop. So I got my light uh, jacket, rain repellent jacket with me. Last night, uh, this is not part two of the uh, the TIF uh, IT990 insulation tester. This is not part two. Um, <clears throat> this is just a, a little bit of um, show and tell, I guess you can call it. And I'm going to try to keep it short, but I'm not making any promises. Um, off camera last night, while the video was rendering, and it went in at two and a half gigs, and came out at four and a half, no, five and a half gigs, it took four and a half hours to render. Unbelievable. I don't know, that Sony Studio 13, it triples the size of the file going in. Uh, whatever's going in, it triples it going out. I don't know. But it did a good job. Um, well, anyways, while it was rendering, I went back out to the shop, and uh, my good old uh, micro scope, I lope. When I got in there, off camera, I could do so much better, you know. I can get right up here, and I can look like this, and I can move it around. Well, I can't do it with the camera. And the reason, <coughs> the reason is, I'm working on, I'm sitting here. I, I don't even know if you can even see this in camera view. I'm using the uh, Sony HDR SR12. And um, I have to be back quite a ways in order to see everything. But I'm sitting at the bench facing the board like this, or if I'm looking at it this way or whatever. Well, the camera's on the side. The camera can't be in back of me because my damn head and body would be in the way. It can't be overhead straight down because my damn ugly head would be in the way. You see, a lot of guys that work with cameras coming down or on the side are, are working back here at about two feet away from or maybe at least a foot away and no closer than the work. I'm working like this. So if I'm working like this, no camera is going to benefit me or you as the viewer. So anyways, I got I got it out. I'm going to show you some close-ups. Um, Yes, the um, the C1384, which I found out as I played the video back in the computer on the 20-inch, 22-inch monitor, um, I was able to pause it, and where the frame stopped where I can read it, it was clearly a 1384 um and thanks to some of my viewers, and I also found a pinout on it. It's kind of confusing, because I'm used to transistors being emitter, base, and collector. Always the center lead being base. Well, that's not the case in this, but anyways. So, after I got the transistor out, and here it is right here, good old Soderwick is what I use off camera with the magnifier. And with the soldering iron, I managed to clear the, hole, clear the holes out and pull this out. I did not bend these, because this drops right in where it's supposed to be. I'll show you a close-up of this. And when I look at this with the ILO, I can plainly see it's a C1384, which translates, like everybody said, to a 2SC1384. And then the other number under it is R. It's either R2, R62 rather, or R63. I cannot make that second digit out even with this. Okay, 
but the point is, it's a 2SC um, 1384. Can't remember numbers, sorry. So, <clears throat> we'll put that up here for now. The chip, some of you had mentioned in the back, in the past videos, look on the, there might be a number on the back, there isn't. It just says Taiwan. And on the front, where it's blown out, you can see the little symbol for Texas Instruments. I'll show you that in a close-up. And the letter T, and then the rest is blown out with the uh, hole in the uh, chip. I'll show you this in a close-up, too. So this could be a TL494. It could be. Today's Saturday, as of today, uh, nothing in the mail for any chip. So... Um, perhaps whoever, one of my viewers sent it, this has happened before, there was no postage or insufficient postage on the envelope. And like I say, this has happened before, so uh, the gentleman who was sending me the uh, chip, possible that he didn't put enough postage on it. Uh, one time I got a, a package or a letter uh, with absolutely no postage on it and about two weeks later I did get it uh, it was in my mailbox and the post office didn't demand uh, me to pay postage but it took two weeks to get it from a couple of states over so um, not saying that's what happened but it could be but anyways I've got them coming from Singapore so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little box well I've got one right here a little nice little cardboard box. I'm going to put all this in it and put it off to the side uh, because I heard from Bob the other day on voicemail on my cell phone and he's got a radio for me to fix so I don't want to tie up the bench with this stuff. I do this stuff while I'm not doing anything else. Okay so um, I'm going to put everything aside until um, whether I get the chip from one of my viewers or whether I get the chip from Singapore, either way, it's going to take a while, so that's it. So anyways, let me temporarily put this up here. Let me make some room here and get the camera set back up um, on the little tripod, and i got to be very careful not to... Um, knock it over the little tripod that is setting on now I'm going to <clears throat> come up with something I don't know what yet maybe I'll mount something here on the wall and have it come out but before I do that I want to show you something uh, once again um, again I hope you can see in camera view here uh, what I'm trying to do so I'm gonna hold this board up higher okay if I'm sitting here Working on the board this way, the problem I'm having with orientation is the camera is not faced at the board like I am. The camera's on the side. It's physically impossible for me to put the camera in front of me because I can't, uh, I don't have x-ray vision, so I can't see through <laughs> to the, uh, the camera in order to see what I'm doing. Camera would be in my way. So the camera has to be on the side. So if the camera's on the side and I'm trying to move it, I'm having a hell of a time because the orientation is wrong. The camera needs to be faced the same direction as my head is facing when I'm looking at it. Oh, I can't do an overhead shot because my head will be in the way because I have to get very close. Um... It's just the way it is. So anytime you see close-ups of this, the camera's on the side, and I'm sitting straight on the board. So I hope I can make that point clear. Like I said, I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, I know George kostafi has got a dozen cameras all over, all high-ticketed, high high-priced cameras. Uh, and, you know, he can move them all over the angle and zoom in and stuff like that. Um, I only have this one good camera, and like I say, it is very heavy, and um, it's what it is. It does a good job, but it's limited because of 
trying to zoom in on stuff here, you're not focusing, because this camera, to my knowledge, doesn't have manual focus. So, uh, okay, enough of that. Let me get you some close-ups of this. Um, <clears throat> this here... You probably remember this. Uh, George Christoffi made a video putting this together last year and sent it to me. It was very nice of him to do that. And I made this little stand for it. I showed you that on a video. Component tester. I'm going to show you something. This transistor tests out as a dual diode on this. I tried it five or six times. I turned it off, turned it back on. It tests as a dual diode does not test as a transistor. So, the only thing I can say is, to be honest, maybe I should just order a 13, I have to look at the numbers, a 2SC1384, instead of putting the old one back in, put a 1384 in there, because according to this, it's a dual diode. I don't know. Could a 2SC1384 two, two be a dual diode? I looked up the specs on it, and it's not a dual diode. It's a transistor. But according to this little guy, it's a dual diode, and I'm going to show you. Hang on again. Please. <laughs> Don't go away. All right. You can see that I've got the transistor component tester hooked up. Now, because I put regular clip leads on here, I did that shortly after George sent it to me. Um, I had to make the remote leads, these I made up, onto the transistor, as you can see here. And I checked, and it's not shorted. So, um, I'm going to set you back on the tripod here and get you a close-up of this meter here. So, hang on a minute. Okay. Now, we'll just push the button. Testing the battery. See it? It's a dual diode. See what it shows? Pins 2, 1, and 3 are showing a dual diode. And over to the right-hand side, I think that's a symbol for a diode. Uh, I'm trying to read that on the LCD screen. looks like 724 millivolts. Uh, 817 millivolts. Uh, 164.5 ohms. Now it's showing a diode on 2 and 3 now. I didn't touch anything. So let's push the button again. Well, that's what it's showing. <clears throat> it's not showing it as a transistor. It's showing it as a dual diode. But then, as time goes on, it goes to a single diode. I'm not touching anything. Um, my hands are not even on the bench. I'm sitting about a foot away from the camera and the tester. Now it goes into pins 2 and 3 as a single diode. At least, why is that the symbol? See, this is, this is a completely different... Um, tested in the one I had that failed on me. The one I had had a full-size screen on it and it showed the symbols a lot bigger and a lot easier and uh, for the most part it did show a transistor if it was. All right. Um, now, it just went off. Okay. Let's see what happens now. If I test the battery, I'm pushing the lever. That's why it's changing. I'm pushing the lever again. I'm pushing the lever again. All right. I guess you're not supposed to touch the lever. Okay, so I'm letting it go now. I've got my hands off of it. So, according to this tester, this is not a transistor. I don't have much faith in these transistor component testers anyways. Um, but anyways, let's leave it hooked up. Let's stop the video a minute. 
as you can see, I'm hooked up still. Because the leads are so close together, I have to leave this arrangement on. You can see that I've got the three leads, but they're still hooked to the transistor over there. So now what I'm going to do is to try to test it with an ohmmeter. Now this is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, so I'm going to do it off camera. i got to pick this up. Hopefully the leads don't pop off. So I have to try to read the base, the meta base and collector that I jotted down. And as I think, the way I understand it, it's 3, 2, and 1 as you're looking at the bottom of the transistor with the flat side towards you. I think it's looking at the top of the transistor uh, with the flat side away from you. It's one, two, three. Anyways, uh, one is emitter, two is collector, and three is base. I'm so used to the old system, emitter, collector, and base. Every transistor that I've ever worked on in the 60s was always from the tab, like on the round transistors with the little tab, it was always emitter, base, and collector. Yeah, you know, the only thing you had to worry about is what is a PNP or an NPN. You didn't have all these complicated uh, configurations here. Again, I'm from the old school because I'm an old man. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to do the best I can. It's very hard for me to identify these leads. I wish I had my super cricket. That would identify the leads on that. I wouldn't have to worry about where the emitter base and collector is. All right, let me get you on to the uh, ohmmeter here. All right, number three is base. If I'm reading this right, this is the base. Okay, now i got to get my cheat sheet out because I can't remember nothing. How to test transistors. I got this off of, uh, I can't remember who sent this to me, but I printed it out. Why not test a, uh, just use a diode test on your meter. Okay, I have to remember, I'm sorry, i just ignorant when it comes to this stuff. Positive on base. All right, with the multimeter, positive on base. Okay, so here I am, we're using the diode test. He's saying use the diode test okay so the positive of your meter which is right here is on the base okay okay so that's on the base and I gotta refer to the sheet showing my stupidity but I told you I'm I'm no damn good at this stuff not with this stuff not with transistors. And uh, on the base, negative on the emitter. Well, let's see. As I looked at that transistor, uh, the emitter should be on pin 1. So, um, uh, that should be the green clip over here. So, okay. Okay. And if that's the case, uh, in the middle, you should have a forward bias of about 0.5 to 0.7 volts. There it is. So I do have that. Okay. Now, what it's saying to do here, uh, then move the negative to the collector and you should read about the same so I gotta move the negative lead to the collector which uh, the collector is pin 2 they threw me all off because they don't have the standard configuration of in a mid basic collector they got to do everything bass backwards, as I always say. The collector would be pin 2, and that's in the middle. Uh, 
and that would be this lead right here. So what they're saying is, and I gotta refer back to this again, then move the negative lead to the collector, okay. All right, we'll move the negative lead to the collector. And, it should read about the same, okay. All right, and it does, it reads 0.650. I don't have to show you the meter, take my word for it. Then put the negative lead on the base and the positive on the emitter to check for reverse bias. Okay, so I gotta put the negative lead on the base. I gotta find the base again. Oh, I hate these small things. Base, I gotta look, I gotta refer to this, I'm sorry. Uh, base, 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 base. Where the hell is the base? Okay, that's pin number three. So, the base is pin number three. That would be here. So, they're saying, put the negative lead on the base. Okay, we will do that right now. Negative lead on the base. Okay. And... And put the negative lead on the base and positive on the emitter. What's the positive? Oh man, you're making it hard for me. Use new technology. <laughs> All right, I gotta look up the emitter again. Uh, which one did they say? So put the name on the base and the positive on the emitter. Emitter is going to be pin one, which is on the right, which is the green lead. Okay, and this is to check the reverse bias, and we have over limit, so we are fine. So let me stop the video here a minute. All right, one last test here, then move the positive to the collector. And you should read infinity also. Move the positive lead to the collector. So we got to find our collector again. Uh, is pin two, which is the middle. So you move the positive lead to the collector. It doesn't say anything about moving the negative lead. It just happens to be when I put these together, you know, like this green here, because that's all I had was a green alligator clip, and it happens to be red on the other side over here. But anyways, we're over limits, so we don't, according to this tester, uh, uh, this test procedure, the transistor is good. All right, I did a little circuit tracing, very difficult, but I did it last night off camera. Um, this is the secondary of the high voltage transformer. As I recall, I think it was, um, ooh, 475 ohms DC. This is the primary. It reads about um, 0.3 ohms. I think it was 0.3 ohms DC. Okay, you see, this is where the transistor was, these three leads, uh, holes here. Okay, one of the leads, the center lead of that transistor, I think it's the center, although the center's, yeah, maybe that's the collector, goes to the primary of the transformer. So I think this is a driver transistor for the high voltage, which generates the 500 volts here. Okay, that's my feeling. Uh, but you can see, now if you look very carefully, there is a hole, there's four holes there, but only three are used. There's a dead hole there, it's in the board, you can see light through it on the other side when I shine a light through it, or hold it up to the light. Um, but there's no trace there, it's just between one and two, all right? 
So, anyways, this is the back end of the chip, of course. So the chip is probably does all the oscillating and everything, and it drives this transistor, and this transistor generates. It's a driver for this. Now I'm not sure whether this transistor might be an oscillator. These things usually oscillate at a high frequency, uh, usually around 25 kilocycles or thereabouts. I know that the Navy oscilloscope I uh, restored, you've seen videos on that, I'm sure, uh, it generates uh, 25,000 cycles uh, and has an oscillator transistor. In that case, it's a 2N3055 that drives that. Uh, and then uh, other transistors drive it. But this here, I, I'm guessing that this might be a driver transistor for this high voltage transformer. Now, let me turn this over and get you an angle shot in here. And again, I may be focusing on other things that I don't want to be focusing on. See, I'm looking di directly at it now. But now I can't find where I am. There I am. Okay. That's what I took. That's where I took the transistor out. And there's a dot there. You see that dot? I put that there to tell me that the flat side of the transistor faces the dot. If I don't do that, I'll put that in ass backwards. You know me. One other thing before we close out. This is only a show and tell on this. These here, and I tested these diodes, these are, come on, I'm just, uh, here are the high voltage diodes, and these are the high voltage capacitors here. Uh, these both go to the common point, and these capacitors are turned around so you can't see any identifi identifying capacity on them. <clears throat> Um, but these two red diodes are your high voltage diodes uh, that generate up to 500 volts DC. And of course the other diodes over here are um, low voltage signal diodes. And then this one over here is, uh, I couldn't read it because the numbers went around to the back side, but it looked like a 2N40 something, so it's probably a 2N404, uh, some 4004, whatever it is. Uh, anyways, um, uh, uh, probably a 1,000 PIV diode. Uh, anyways, I tested all these diodes. This one, one's over here, and they all test out good. And these diodes tested out good. So that's your high voltage. And I did trace this out last night. And... Uh, They all go to a common point. Over here. All right. Okay, before I close this video, this is another close-up of the, what I think is a TL-494. And in previous videos, uh, my uh, viewers have said that and I agree with all of them you can see a T just on the left side of that uh, hole that's blown in the ch chip and you can see a symbol for Texas Instruments on the left hand side on the bottom there is nothing but Taiwan this could be upside down I cannot tell I got this out quite easily with a very small flat blade screwdriver. It came out very easily. I used to have chip removal tools. I don't have that anymore. Uh, what little I did mess around with them. Okay, I am going to end this video. All right, there's a good look at it there, getting my fingers in there so that the camera will focus on it. All right, so... Um, I, I did not upset these leads. That's exactly the way they were in there. I could try to straighten them out and put them in there. Uh, one of my viewers said you 
pretty difficult to break them. They won't break off, but with my luck, they probably will. <laughs> Anyways, you can see a symbol that looks like Panasonic. That triangle on the lower right, in the lower left hand corner of the transistor. But why this thing shows as a dual diode on that transistor checker, I don't know. Um, let me show you one other thing on the transistor checker before we close this video out. This is getting too long again. Last night when I did that, it showed each time I hit this button, it would show diode, it would show transistor. Then you hit it again with nothing connected to it. Then it would show diode. You hit it again, it would show capacitor. But it's, I, I don't think it's doing that now. So I don't know. There isn't any instructions on how to use this thing. But all I know is, no matter how many times I try to test that transistor on this, it shows it as a dual diode. Okay, folks. That's going to be it on this. Until the uh, chip gets here. Um... Kind of like your feedback on the transistor, um, I can't rely on the component tester because it's very misleading. But according to the uh, tester, the um, my Fluke 73, making these tests as per instructions that somebody sent me last year and I printed out. And I keep them as a reference in my shop at all times. It tests good. And it behaves like a transistor. On the other hand, that could be a dual diode. But it doesn't list that on the spec sheet. And I do have the spec sheet. Thank you for uh, sending them. But I do have the spec sheet on it. So I don't know. Maybe I better off, before I put the chip in, maybe I should get the... Um, uh, 2SC uh, 1384. I don't know. We'll play that by ear. It's going to be probably at least next week before I get anything. If not, not a problem. We'll wait until it comes from Singapore. Um, I'm not going to dump this at the ham auction, as I said. This is, um, if I can fix this, great. If I can't, well, that's another story. Stay tuned for part two. Remember, this is just a show and tell. Part two, I'm not going to go through all this testing thing. Part two, I will have the transistor back in here again. And all you'll see is me putting the TL494 when it comes in, in the socket, firing it up. And if we're lucky, there may be no fireworks. I know you're probably looking for fireworks. We'll wait till part two, and then we will find out. Thanks for watching. Keep dry, everybody, and happy Easter.